good day guys we have been discussing the menstrual abnormalities in the earlier videos so now we'll study about dysmenorrhea in this lecture this is dr rahul sam i'll guide you through the whole topic so the dysmenorrhea is defined as a menstrual pain it's nothing but the menstrual pain so dysmenorrhea is of two types number one is primary and number 2 is secondary so we will speak about these two in detail so so primary dysmenorrhea can be defined as a recurrent lower abdominal pain shortly before or during menstruation right so the etiology or the causes of primary dysmenorrhea are you are not completely understood but however this is the menstrual pain it's also associated with early menarche and nulliparity and many other secondary risk factors as well so the next we'll study about the pathophysiology of primary dysmenorrhea so as we all know during ovulation the progesterone is secreted in decreased levels so the progesterone is secreted in decreased levels so and also due to the rupture of follicles prostaglandins are released so the prostaglandins are released due to the rupture of follicle and we also also know the prostaglandins result that leads to the vasoconstriction the ischemia so this vasoconstriction and ischemia causes the contraction of uterine muscle to allow cervix to shed the endometrium to allow cervix to open passage of shed endometrium so this causes pain which is the pathophysiology of primary dysmenorrhea right so next we'll study about the clinical features of primary dysmenorrhea so this primary dysmenorrhea usually occurs during first 3 days usually occurs during first 3 days of menstruation so this pain is spasmodic crampy occurs in the lower abdomen or pelvic midline so this pain often radiates to the back or thigh so what are the symptoms that we can find in primary dysmenorrhea so the patient has headache diarrhea fatigue nausea and flushing so these are the common symptoms found so on the pelvic examination shows normal pelvic examination so the pelvic examination will be normal so this pain starts 30 minute before onset of periods and stays up to 10 hours usually post onset of the pain 
So this uh, dysmenorrhea is uh, usually seen in normal women and also women with fibroids. So the only diagnosis here is we have to rule out secondary dysmenorrhea. So the primary dysmenorrhea doesn't need any specific diagnosis. But however, we should rule out secondary dysmenorrhea. Right? And the treatment of primary dysmenorrhea is the symptomatic treatment like NSAIDs. You can give acetaminophen or um, naproxen methanamic acid and also topical application of heat. NSAIDs. Topical application of heat will do good. And you can give hormonal contraceptive pills. Right? So next we'll discuss about next we'll discuss the secondary dysmenorrhea right so the secondary dysmenorrhea is defined as a recurrent lower abdominal pain however the pain is in the same location it's same as the primary dysmenorrhea so lower abdominal pain shortly before or during menstruation. So, but this secondary dysmenorrhea is due to an underlying condition. So the primary dysmenorrhea is due to the contraction of the uterine muscle to shed the endometrium but the secondary dysmenorrhea is usually due to an underlying condition right so we'll speak about the etiology or the causes of secondary dysmenorrhea and also the secondary dysmenorrhea the pain starts three to four days prior and it actually stays throughout the menses unlike primary dysmenorrhea so now we'll study about the etiology or the causes so since the disease is due to an underlying condition so there are various factors associated with secondary dysmenorrhea number one we'll speak about the uterine causes of secondary dysmenorrhea you have pelvic inflammatory disease so the patients with pelvic inflammatory disease get secondary dysmenorrhea and also patients with or the, or the women with the intrauterine device can get secondary dysmenorrhea so adenomyosis fibroids and also cervical polyps can cause secondary dysmenorrhea all right so then we'll speak about the endo uterine uh, the extra uterine causes the extra uterine causes of secondary dysmenorrhea so what are the extra uterine causes so endometriosis Additions, functional ovarian cysts, and inflammatory bowel disease can also cause secondary dysmenorrhea. All right. So next, we'll study about the clinical features. In secondary dysmenorrhea so what are the clinical features so it usually depends upon the underlying cause And 
because secondary dysmenorrhea is usually suspected and the patient is after 25 year of age and the patient is over 25 years of age and the pelvic examination is abnormal such as difference in uterine size cervical motion tenderness and adenoidal tenderness or masses the uterine masses or the vaginal or cervical discharge so these are the abnormal pelvic examination which we usually find so this abnormal pelvic examination can lead to suspicion of secondary dysmenorrhea right and also so you have abnormal pelvic examination so this pain usually tends to get worse by time and also no previous history of pain with menstruation infertility irregular cycles abnormal uterine bleeding and dyspareunia dyspareunia is defined as the pain during sexual intercourse so dyspareunia can cause secondary dysmenorrhea dysmenorrhea all right so in secondary dysmenorrhea the patient is usually non responsive to nsaids right so now we will speak about the diagnosis of secondary dysmenorrhea so the diagnosis also depends on the underlying cause so we will run some lab test initially so initial laboratory testing so what are the possible lab tests can we evaluate so we evaluate cbc the complete blood count the differential count as well in order to rule out infection and you run urine analysis in order to rule out urinary tract infections and other diagnosis or the other clean lab test can also be beta hcg in order to rule out ectopic pregnancy and also gonococcal and chlamydial swabs to rule out sexually transmitted diseases and pid and also we can do the pelvic ultrasound to diagnose secondary dysmenorrhea all right so now coming to the treatment of secondary dysmenorrhea so treatment as we said already it depends on underlying cause for both primary and secondary dysmenorrhea we can treat symptomatically with nsaids such as ibuprofen naproxen mefenamic acid all right and you also have antispasmodics 
such as dicyclamine, drotaverin, hyoscine, and you can also give combined oral contraceptives so that the cycles become anovulatory. So in order to achieve an anovulatory cycles, we can give the patient or we can treat the patient with combined oral contraceptives, right? And the surgical treatment can also be done. So we do the surgical dilation of cervix, right? Usually, Paris women have lesser spasmodic dysmenorrhea. All right. And also, you can do presacral nerve ablation. where laser is done, laser or thermal resection is done. So we do laser or thermal resection of hypogastric plexus. And also we can treat the patient with GnRH analogs to stop the periods. All right. So now we are done with uh, primary and secondary dysmenorrhea. Sorry. So now we'll speak about a specific condition called as a membranous dysmenorrhea. So what is membranous dysmenorrhea, guys? So as we all know, the whole human body has a fibrinolytic system, so which is responsible for removing fibrin from the vascular system, so that the clots are prevented from occluding the vessel, right? We have this fibrinolytic system in our body. So we'll speak about the membranous dysmenorrhea here. So this fibrinolytic system, which is responsible for removing the clots from occluding the vessel. So the fibrinolyting system in the uterus is responsible for less or non clumping of blood. Right? So due to the absence of fibrinolytic system due to the total absence. So these causes more contractions. So, and these contractions lead to pain. So leading to membranous dysmenorrhea. And this can also be defined as, so the membranous dysmenorrhea can also be defined as a sudden sloughing of thickened endometrium as a whole. So which leads to severe cramping. So I hope you guys are clear about dysmenorrhea, its types. So in the upcoming videos, we'll discuss about more menstrual abnormalities. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching.